Hey guys, it's Ben from the Strength Factory and welcome to the latest episode of Factory Knowledge. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about different ways of loading an exercise with weights, whether it's single arm, double arm, overhead, front of your chest, wherever it is, I'm going to explain how to do it, why to do it, and the implications to your training. So stay tuned and I'm going to take you through it. When you're planning on carrying out your own training, uh, you may often get confused with the different ways to hold a weight or a pair of weights, okay? Whether it's dumbbells, kettlebells, or barbell, there's actually different ways of doing it. And all of them have their own effect on the training that you carry out. So what I'm gonna use today is I'm gonna use the rear lunge as my model to explain this to you, and I'm gonna use one or two dumbbells. Now before I get into details, make sure that if you're loving these videos, you hit like and you hit subscribe and you share it with a buddy, okay? I'm gonna keep knocking these out at least one a week for you, trying to do all things action sports performance so that you can have the best training possible so you can have the most fun possible doing your sport. First of all then, I've got my pair of dumbbells and again, I'm talking about the rear lunge, but this could be a step up, a squat, a forward lunge, a side lunge. You know, there's a thousand different exercises that this could be, okay? But the same principles will apply. So first of all then, obviously two is heavier than one, and inherently, with two weights, I'm gonna need balance, okay? So I've got stability. So for instance, with the rear lunge, I can hit my rear lunges with both weights like that. And that is a really great way, uh, way to build strength in the lower leg because you can take a good load and it's nice and stable because the weight's down low. Now, a progression for that would be to hold them in front of the upper chest where you can either hold them like this, like this, or actually kettlebells are more convenient. And now I've got the same load, but with the weight held up high, I get a lot more work on the core here, and as well as the core, I'm really working the upper back and the arms, so it becomes a good postural exercise to stand nice and tall with those weights up here. Now, this is where it's interesting. So, you may find that uh, people with really strong legs and maybe less strong arms, and this is a lot of females in particular who come and see me, is that they want to do lunges like this with two weights, but the limiting factor becomes the biceps, okay, and that arm strength to hold the weight. And so then we can't use enough weight over enough reps to get enough effect to strengthen the legs. And that is where understanding this process becomes important because for those athletes, holding the weights up here isn't appropriate because it's not effective for achieving the goal of strengthening the legs. The other option for a pair of weights or you know, for any weight, so you could use a barbell, for instance, is to take it overhead. And this is obviously going to create the least stable and it's going to be the most demanding exercise on the whole body. But because the weight you're going to be able to use is going to be lower, it's going to be a lot less demanding on the legs. So it really depends what you're trying to achieve with the exercise. So you can see there, I was pulling a bit of a funny face because I had to concentrate because number one, you need good shoulder mobility to get in that position and then you need great control from literally your hands all the way through to your feet. So I would describe this as more of a, a shoulder posture and core exercise that works the legs rather than an outright leg exercise, which is essentially what the lunge is. So again, you need to understand why you're picking certain variations of an exercise when you put it into your program and then apply it in the gym. So we've just run through using two weights at once. And basically, in this position by your sides, this is where you're the most stable and where you can have the most load. And so this is gonna be the most effective 
for really strengthening the lower body, okay? If grip becomes an issue, you can use a lifting strap as well uh, if for the last set or something like that, if that needs to happen. So, let's go to a, a single weight. Now what we've got here is a really interesting aspect to add to your training, as in, when I'm doing my lunge normally, I'm basically only moving forwards and backwards, okay? Because I do the lunge, I step backwards. Whereas now, even though I don't move sideways, I'm trying to resist that sideways movement. And this has a really powerful training effect on, for instance, your hips, okay, and your core, your posture, and it challenges your balance even more. So let's talk then about which hand you hold it in. So if I were to rear lunge here, with the weight on the same side as the lead leg, so that's called isolateral or ipsilateral. In that position there, obviously I'm resisting that lean over, but actually it doesn't create much more stress or demand on the hip. You just get a little extra work in the groin. Okay, if I were to go the other way, so this would be called contralateral, okay, so the opposite side. So that's the working leg and I'm holding it on the opposite side. That is now going to really work the glute need, okay, so basically the outside of the hip of that working leg. And those of you who know a little bit about training know that this is something that we're, we're always trying to work on. Okay, so if we can strengthen that, then it helps to keep the knees in a good place when we're in the gym, when we're on the bike, when we're running, skiing, snowboarding, whatever it is that you do. Okay, so that single arm loading, if you load it on the front leg, it's not as demanding on the hip. We still do have some core work and you can load it pretty heavy because it's quite stable compared to the contralateral loading is a little less stable and it's going to put a lot more work onto the glute mead there, okay, i.e. the hip of that working leg. One exercise isn't better than the other, they're just different. Following a similar progression to the uh, double dumbbell loading that I did at the start, we can obviously then move it up the body, okay? So again, dumbbell, kettlebell will be like this, okay? And the same things apply. So if I'm loading the same side then obviously you have to really work up back on the core to stay upright just like the two but there's not a huge amount of extra work required on the hip whereas here if i work the opposite side then i do get a bit more work out of the hip and just like the double you're not going to be able to do it with as much weight here and people with weaker upper bodies compared to their legs are going to be restricted with the total load they can use, okay? So lunging like that is fine, but you've got to think about why you're doing it, okay? Is it effectively as a whole body, like core exercise to get everything connected, literally from your feet all the way through your hips, through your core, through your upper back and shoulders to your hand? That's fine. That's Absolutely great, I use it all the time, nothing wrong with that, but you just need to know why you're doing it and what you're trying to achieve. Following the same sequence, we now want to take it overhead on a single arm, and this is obviously going to be really unstable. Now, generally what's going to happen is that to keep your balance and stability, the weight's going to tend towards the middle of your body, and so which leg you do isn't really which side or which leg you do isn't really a big issue. So what I would tend to do in this situation is to alternate legs. So I'm going to do work the left arm first. Keep nice and tight. And we're going to hit those alternate legs. Rather than for the other ones where I would do a sequence on one side and then I would change sides. I really hope that's helped you guys to make some better decisions when you're in the gym and training. Remember you can apply this to pretty much any exercise, the same principles apply, and it's just about applying that train of thought. 
what am I trying to achieve, and then that informs the method that you use, okay? And that's across all parts of training, in the gym or out of the gym. If you do want some help with your training though, and if you want me to apply my knowledge to make sure that you are doing the correct exercises, you are making the most of your time in the gym, and you're getting maximum value for that expensive gym membership, then make sure you click the link in the description below and go and check out the Complete Mountain Bike Programme.